Dear Canada, Today I would like to talk to you all about Gail Shea and why we should call for her resignation. For those of you who don't know, she is the Minister of the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. You know, the one who got pied by a protester a couple months ago. She is the head honcho, the one with the last word and the one with all the power to decide what's best for our oceans and its species. First, I think it's best that we get to know her a little bit better before I talk about her decision since being appointed the Minister of the DFO. Gail Shea started her career as an employee of the Canada Revenue Agency. From 1997 until 2000, Gail served as a Special Assistant to the Premier of Prince Edward Island. In 2000, Shea was elected as a member of the Legislative Assembly in PEI. She served as Minister of Community and Cultural Affairs, and she was the first female Minister of Transportation and Public Works. Gail was elected into the House of Commons in 2008 with the current Conservative government. Prime Minister Stephen Harper then appointed her as the Minister of the DFO and the Federal Minister responsible for PEI. Did you know that Gail was expected to be appointed Minister of the DFO if she won the Western PEI riding? She won over former PEI Premier Keith Milligan by 55 votes in a recount. That's right, I said recount. Keith Milligan challenged the polls stating that records show that a dead person voted in last week's federal election, amongst many other inconsistencies. Shea still won in the end, but there is something quite fishy about how she came to power. She also serves on the Cabinet Committee of Foreign Affairs and National Security as well as the Committee of Economic Growth and Long-Term Prosperity. Whoa, what an impressive resume. Gail Shea is one successful bureaucrat. Unfortunately for our oceans, Gail Shea's background is not in science. Now, here in Canada, as you all know, in order to get a job in a specialized field, you need to be educated and trained in that particular field, right? In fact, most Canadians who further their education in order to get these specialized jobs go deep into debt with our government for student loans. But hey, at least in the end, they hold sufficient qualifications to be hired in these important positions. It doesn't make any sense to me why the person in charge of all the decision making when it comes to our oceans is not a qualified marine biologist. Although there are many DFO employees who are qualified, the final say in any matter related to our oceans is in the hands of a politician with absolutely no scientific background. How can she make wise decisions about the world's oceans when she doesn't even have a background in science? Please subscribe Canada because within the next month or so I will be making videos touching on all kinds of issues that fall into her jurisdiction. She has made a series of bad decisions as our minister. It's time to stand up, Canada. It's time to stand up for our oceans, and it's time for the people in charge to be qualified for what they do. Thanks, Canada, and we'll see you soon. Bye.